thank you all for being here today. I'm excited to be able to present uh, the big idea, at least the mayor's big idea, for the city of Little Rock. Uh, thank you, Jim, for that introduction. I, I hope my career hadn't peaked yet. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, there's always, uh, uh, you may not have a lot of opponents, but sometimes you always have opposition. So let me just say that um, I'd like to give you a little bit of a story of Little Rock. It's a mid-sized southern city, uh, about 200 uh, plus thousand people in, a, in an economic development area of over a million, um, uh, lots of other cities around us. Uh, the capital city, of course, of the state, uh, with uh, some obvious uh, national and international distinction relative to the issue of integration in America, the central high crisis in 1957, and what it means about the community. Um, our community is uh, population-wise, we're a minority-majority city. 48% uh, of our population is uh, Caucasian. About 42.5% is uh, African American. And we have a, uh, about 7.5% uh, that is uh, Hispanic, uh, uh, the fourth largest growing Hispanic population per capita in the country, and about 3.5% Asian. So it gives you a little bit of a context of it. And when I ran for mayor, uh, I ran really because, uh, uh, and somebody said, why, why, are you, why do you want to run for mayor? You're a lawyer, you're making some money. Uh, uh, why do you want to do that? And I said, well, I, I like to solve problems. And uh, I had um, been at the 40th anniversary of Central High uh, in uh, 1997, and uh, our city and their esteemed wisdom at that time went around the neighborhood and uh, whitewashed most of the vacant houses so they looked a little better for the national press. Uh, fast forward 10 years later, it's uh, May of, uh, it's 2000, uh, and, uh, 2007. I had just become mayor, and there had been marginal, marginal improvements, uh, but uh, not what I thought should be the case. And so I ran to try and improve our neighborhoods and also to improve our downtown. My big story uh, uh, for this big city event is to really tell you about how one can reinvent uh, an, uh, a downtown and turn it from a, a place that was totally dead for 30 years and make it a vibrant area for the community. I, I firmly believe that when the core of a downtown, the heart of a downtown is thriving, uh, that you, uh, you, the rest of the city, the rest of the arteries of the city are going to thrive as well. So, so uh, let me just say that um, my desire was to reinvent Main Street. Um, in 1994, uh, we created the river market area east and west along, along the uh, riverfront. Uh, President Clinton had built his library on the, on the eastern end of that. We had a convention center that hosts 300,000 people a year at least, and they would travel east and west down uh, Clinton Avenue to uh, enjoy the stores and uh, restaurants and, and so forth and they would walk by Main Street and uh, nobody ever went on Main Street. Main Street back in the 1950s and 60s and 70s was the, was the heartthrob of the city and the state. It was where retail uh, uh, and the retail environment was thriving, commercial. That's where everybody wanted to go. People would take the bus to come into Little Rock from some of the small towns around the state to do their shopping on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Um, and uh, unfortunately, what happened was is that uh, we kind of got into this making these Main Street malls in the, in the early 80s, and so we shut off all the, part, all the, all of the, all of the streets. And uh, sure enough, it didn't take long before what was well-intended turned into be a disaster. It, it killed all of the traffic, and so all of the retail, all of the department stores uh, left and went to other parts unknown into the suburbs. And so, uh, consequently, what we had was a main street that was really, really deserted. We had a we had a, a hundred year old military surplus store there. We had a place called Mr. Cool's where you could buy a really neat looking suit, uh, perfect for South Beach. And I'll tell you that a couple buddies of mine and I, before I was mayor. Uh, went to Mr. Cool's, and I think I had a pretty bright blue suit that I landed in Miami Beach on, and the other one had a yellow one, and another one had a pink one. So you can you can imagine what we look like. But uh, that was what Mr. Cool's was all about. And uh, we had a wig store, and uh, and then way on down the street, uh, we had a wonderful professional repertory theater that located there in early 1981. And they had no friends, they had no neighbors, and so I decided I was going to try and figure out how to do that. So, luckily enough for me, when I got first elected, I uh, met Joe Riley, the godfather of all mayors from Charleston, and he uh, kind of befriended me and put me in touch with the Mayor's Institute on City Design. 
And I went there to, uh, and took Main Street as my project. Uh, many mayors know that that's how that program works. Uh, I knew what needed to be done, but to trying to put all the pieces together was going to be very, very difficult. So consequently, what I did is um, uh, came back, and uh, we knew that we had an idea. I thought, well, what can we do to try and create some activity and ideas? And uh, having been involved in uh, musical theater in the past and having uh, relatives uh, that uh, were in the dance uh, that danced professionally, uh, I knew that if I could get the arts organizations to all congregate around the repertory theater, perhaps we could create some synergy for that. And so we went about doing that. And the story I want to tell, and I guess I better hurry it up. It looks like I'm running out of time already. Uh, the story I wanted to tell is one that you'll see maybe was very situational. Maybe it's, you call it luck. Uh, but I, I think it has to do with perseverance. So we went forward, and as you can see, it was... Uh, uh, singing and dancing on Main Street, Little Rock style. So um, what we did is we decided we were going to do some creative placemaking. So we took an aggregation of the arts organizations. It took me about three years and uh, unfortunately the death of the manager of the symphony to get a new manager so I could convince them to come down to the vacant area downtown with all of their children's orchestras and the main orchestra and say, hey, this is a cool place for you all to be. And so sure enough, we were able to eventually uh, convince them to do that. Uh, I ran into a developer, a uh, young developer, who happened to just be in Little Rock because his wife was uh, in a dermatology residency at the University Medical School. And uh, he was a developer, a young uh, creative guy from the West Coast looking for projects. And he was renovating old condemned houses residentially, turning them into energy efficient homes. And uh, I talked to him and I said, hey, do you think you might be interested in, uh, uh, in some old projects and old buildings downtown that were vacant. And I uh, took him down there and he said yes, he was. And uh, so we began to figure out how to get those in his hands. Uh, in the meantime, I had uh, the largest off Wall Street investment banking firm who had acquired some of the properties along Main Street and lo and behold, they started tearing them all down. And here I am, I've been in preservation. I was president of the Historic Preservation Alliance of America on two different accounts, uh, excuse me, of Arkansas, not America. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Um, and uh, also a local neighborhood uh, uh, our, uh, advocacy organization for, uh, for preservation. And uh, we began to uh, uh, get those properties in his hands. And we were able to begin to do some things. As you see, uh, we aggregated the arts, um, did the Institute on uh, uh, Mayor's Institute, and then use multiple funding sources. I mean, I'm like every mayor, we don't have enough money to get these things done. So the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, I want you to know is one of my best friends. Uh, a lot of people won't think that. Uh, obviously the National Endowment for the Arts as well, and uh, certainly a small amount of money from the city of Little Rock. Uh, what we did is we had partners, uh, partnerships and stakeholders that we asked to come together. So we had meetings, charrettes, programs, decisions, all sorts of recognition that was important. Uh, and uh, you see what we were trying to do is to take, and you see the activity in 1960. Uh, uh, this is the same picture on Main Street, and then you see the picture in 2011. Lots of cars, but nobody on the streets. So the creative corridor was born. Uh, uh, as you see, it's a process. It began in 2007. It's continuing now in 2016. We had dozens of partners. We engaged people to talk about what was important about recreating, reinventing Main Street. Um, went after an EPA grant called the uh, Greening of America's Capitals, and they helped to set the stage for the future grant funding that we got. In the meantime, we went after the NEA um, uh, Our Town grant, uh, which was to put artists above retail and above uh, storefronts on the, on the ground floor and uh, to create apartments there. And uh, then I went after uh, an ANSRC uh, EPA Section uh, 319 uh, grant, which is actually a water quality grant. You know, most downtowns have a lot of concrete and pavement, and it's very bad in terms of the water runoff. It's polluted. It's four times uh, worse uh, pollution than uh, when it hits the streets. And so we use some of the 319 money to uh, actually create the, the vision that we've come about with. And so you'll see that... Uh, we aggregated the arts, we got the symphony, the ballet, the repertory theater, some uh, uh, art galleries and the like up and down Main Street. Uh, this is what the plan looked like and we've actually been able to build phase one of this plan. It looks very much like this. Uh, it's got bioretention basins, 
uh, rain gardens, berms, green roofs, uh, green walls. We're using it as a demonstration project for the city. Uh, you'll see these are some of the nighttime images. Uh, uh, and as a result, this is a little bit dated. So as a result of this, literally within 18 months, the area had transformed. There was over $100 million now in investment in Main Street. The total public investment, the total public investment is about a million dollars from uh, the federal government and a little less than a million dollars in terms of the city, uh, some of it being grant match and the like. Uh, so you can see that the tremendous opportunity here, we, a 50 to 1 leverage with the money that we were able to do, 50 to 1. And that's the private sector saying all of a sudden, this is a hot place to be. We've got to get our businesses down here. The, the real estate community was advertising, you know, come to the creative corridor, we're only two blocks away. So it's very interesting. You'll see the, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of the um, headlines that we had as it relates to uh, what was happening, the tipping point for Little Rock, you'll note. Uh, challenges, um, obviously. People are still lazy. They want to park and walk about two feet before they get into their building. Um, so we're trying to retrain a few people like that. Um, trees. I got. Uh, I got call. I got a. I got a. My my phone was blowing up. I was at a military um, uh, dedication on a Saturday or Sunday, and I, my phone is blowing up. Somebody's trying to get a hold of me. And apparently, um, as part of our process, the contractor hired the guy to cut the trees down on Main Street. And, and we did because they were, you know, all our arborists and horticulturists said these trees are going to die very soon and we need to put new trees in. So they, they did what most contractors do. They go on the weekend so people think you're conspiring against them and they cut the trees off right about here. So I, I'm getting a call from the publisher of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette who's on a plane or he's getting on a plane going to Dallas saying, Mark, please do not cut down any more trees. So long story short, we were able to get him, uh, I was able to go back and convince him and now we've got more trees on Main Street than we ever had, they're the right kind of trees. It's an exciting opportunity, we're in phase two of our project uh, of, uh, of uh, reinventing Main Street uh, and it has been a tremendous opportunity. It is a challenge uh, to deal with uh, moneyed interests that own property that don't need to sell their properties. They, you know, they can hold on to these things. So one of my challenges has been to really wrestle with some of the business interests in our city to make sure that they understand that this redevelopment is exciting and creative. And so this creative placemaking is happening. Uh, on some of those vacant lots, I was able to convince our technology park authority to build their new buildings on these vacant lots. Uh, there will be an investment of $22 million in terms of that. Uh, and uh, we've got a venture center going on, we've got entrepreneurship going on. Uh, it's right next to the financial center of our city and uh, things are really, really uh, thriving there. So thank you very much for inviting me today. Um, and I, I, invite you, uh, I invite you to come to Little Rock, the next great American city in the South. Thank you.